Is it? Could it be? It is! We are on the precipice of another crazy trade idea that has popped up on a Sportsnet article that I honestly can't believe did not pop off even more than it did. I didn't see this anywhere. Nobody was talking about it, there was not really a buzz about this idea, but it was one that, for me, upon reading this article, I was absolutely flabbergasted by. Could we see a three-way? Oh yeah, everybody likes a three-way, right? Especially the three-way trade variety. Never mind the TGIF menage a trois, let's go out there and talk about this article on Ryan Dixon's Sportsnet page from June 21st, so back before the weekend. Here are two possible trade destinations for Winnipeg Jets forward Nikolai Ehlers. Now, it doesn't take a genius to know who we're talking about here. Nikolai Ehlers is in a tough spot because he's a player who is very good, and a lot of people would agree that he is very good. I mean, Ehlers is 28 years old, his contract expires next year, making $6 million a season, and with the idea in mind saying that he may not want to sign an extension and that he would be open to getting traded elsewhere, the 61-point score in 82 games played is now on the block, and the Winnipeg Jets could be seeing what they could get for him. It's interesting, because Ehlers and Rutger McGordy both have themselves placed onto the trade block at the same time, roughly. Kind of gets you wondering, okay, what's really going on with Winnipeg? Either way, Nikolai Ehlers is a talented piece, lots of teams are going to be lined up to the door to get him, and it's really going to boil down to what exactly the price to get him is, and which team is going to be willing to come close to what the Jets actually want. So, leave it to Ryan Dixon to go out there and talk about two potential destinations, and one of them happens to be a three-way trade. Let's go out there and see this. Now, the article opens up with a few introductory paragraphs as to Ehlers and the situation, what's going on in Winnipeg, and how he's been good, but how there isn't really too much certainty as to how he's going to continue. It then goes over the trade ideas, starting out with this behemoth of a deal. The Winnipeg Jets would receive Josh Anderson, Jaden Struble, Justin Barron, Owen Beck, and Carolina's 2024 second round pick, Carolina would receive Nikolai Ehlers, Jordan Harris, and the 26th overall pick from Montreal, previously acquired from Winnipeg, and Montreal receives Marty Natchez. Oh my goodness. This is a three-way trade that is so lopsided. Like, I don't want to go out there and declare winners. You know, you could have your Debates as to what's more valuable, Owen Beck, Baron Anderson, Struble, and a second, or Ehlers, Harris, and a first. But I'll say this, the one loser here, baby, it's Marty Natchez and the Montreal Canadiens. Now, sure, you can say that out of the assets swapped in this deal, Marty Natchez is the best player. That's not a debate. He's better than Anderson, by far, and I'd say that he's a better player than Nikolai Ehlers. But if you wanted to go over what the Montreal Canadiens are giving up, if you add everything together here, it's Josh Anderson, Jaden Struble, Justin Barron, Owen Beck, Jordan Harris, and the 2024 first round pick from Winnipeg in the Sean Monaghan trade. That is six assets right there for Marty Natchez. Heck, the Canadiens could just trade for Natchez with a price lower than that. I get it, you could say Josh Anderson is a negatively valued asset, so you need the extra value to balance things out, but at the end of the day, this is too outrageous, even for Kent Hughes. Trading away not one, not two, but three of the defensemen that are contributing to this big logjam of young blue liners heading into the next few years? I mean, I get it, there's conversations going around saying, hey, if they trade Kid and Gooley, they could draft Z. Booyam, but that's a one-for-one -one swap. Imagine trading away three of these guys, Harris, Barron, and Struble, not to mention Owen Beck on top of that. That's a lot of assets right there, man. And I'm very interested in seeing why exactly it is that Ryan Dixon feels this is appropriate. In fact, if you scroll down into the bottom of the article, it goes out there and writes about why each of these teams would do it. I mean, let's just review it one more time. So Montreal is losing out on Anderson, Struble, Barron, Beck, Jordan Harris, and the 26th overall pick from Martin Natchez. The Winnipeg Jets would be losing Nikolai Ehlers, that's it, 
for Josh Anderson, Jaden Struble, Justin Barron, Owen Beck, and a Carolina second. And the Carolina Hurricanes would be giving up Martin Natchez and that second round pick for Ehlers, Harris, and that 26th overall pick. I'd say that for Winnipeg, they're getting a lot for Nikolai Ehlers. For Carolina, they're getting a decent amount for Martin Natchez and a second round pick. And for Montreal, they're overpaying the hell and back for Natchez. Let's go out there and read the article. Here's why the Jets do it, according to Ryan Dixon. There's no one fantastic piece coming back. But if things break the right way, you could conceivably fill a lot of holes. Anderson is coming off a positively miserable year, and you could argue Montreal would need to pay somebody to take the three years remaining on his contract at a cap hit of 5.5 per season. But this is a fast power forward hockey executives might find hard to quit on, and Winnipeg has historically embraced acquiring guys with a little term. Anderson, who just turned 30 in May, has had trouble staying healthy, but he was basically a 20-goal guy in a 6'3 banger's frame the past two seasons before this past one. No, I disagree. I personally think that Josh Anderson is kind of cooked. I'd love to be proven wrong there, but that's just kind of how I feel about it. Struble is a bull-strong defenseman who moves well and showed real NHL potential as a rookie this year, while Justin Barron is a coveted right-shot demon who's flashed decent NHL stretches. Put the 2021st rounder on a team with his brother, Morgan, and hope he finds his best self at the still young age of 22. Owen Beck is coming off an MVP showing at the Memorial Cup and screams valuable pro. If the Jets are lucky, he might become a top sixer after a little seasoning. Yeah, of course. I mean, the Jets would be receiving half of the Montreal Canadiens prospect pool in this kind of a trade. This is what Dixon writes about in regards to why the Hurricanes would make this trade. Carolina is perpetually in need of scoring, and Ehlers could provide that. After some ups and downs in Manitoba, you have to think Ehlers, if things go well in Raleigh, would seriously consider putting down roots on a quiet, warm locale with a solid squad. Jordan Harris's name may not jump off the page, but he's shown himself to be a very smart D-man in Montreal who can basically be trusted in all situations. His floor is that of an overqualified third-pair guy who can play both sides of the rink and his ceiling is ultra-reliable number four guy on a competitive squad. Carolina would also hold the 26th and 27th selections in the draft. Perhaps it could bundle them and move up to select an even more enticing prospect. Now this is where Dixon writes about the Habs. Bear with this one. It's going a lot out the door for Montreal, but nothing that feels like a backbreaker. Montreal is loaded with young defense and the blue line prospects, so losing three young defensemen with NHL experience, even one as sturdy as Harris, is palatable. Beck is a great prospect, but the Canadians are bringing up a 25-year-old in Natchez who would eat up a top-six spot for the next half-decade, at least. The Canadians have a lot of young quality pieces. If their rebuild lacks something, it's high-end talent and Natchez possesses that. I don't know, dude. I'm not biting. Like, I get it, three young defensemen, a top prospect, a first-round pick, you have to add more because Josh Anderson's going out and he's a negatively valued asset, but that's a lot. And I feel like for Ryan Dixon to make this kind of a proposal and have it not go on to Montreal Canadian social media discourse, or at least that's just kind of what I'm seeing. Like, I didn't see anybody talking about this article, I was just kind of stumbling upon it myself here, and it's been three days, but... The fact that this didn't go viral, oh yeah, that's kind of a good thing I'd say. Because Montreal Canadiens fans can be kind of nasty, especially when it comes to over-evaluating their own prospects and under-evaluating what it is that everybody else is wanting to give to them. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you're a Montreal Canadiens, Carolina Hurricanes, or Winnipeg Jets fan, how do you feel about this three-team trade? Winnipeg gets Josh Anderson, Jaden Struble, Justin Barron, Owen Beck, and a second in exchange for Nikolai Ehlers. Carolina gets Nikolai Ehlers, Jordan Harris, and a 26th overall pick in exchange for Marty Natchez and a second. And Montreal gets Marty Natchez for Anderson, Struble, Barron, Beck, Jordan Harris, and their 26th overall pick. It's a lot to process, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Shout out to Troll Nine. And bye.